Good day to everyone and thank you for joining us. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Simplifying Security Configuration Management. Today's agenda includes a short introduction provided by myself, Paul Eden, a presentation by Jeff Lawson, and then a demo provided by Paul Norris. I'll end the session with a short summary in the form of key takeaways, which hopefully will prove very useful to you. So here's today's mugshots. Um, I'll let Jeff and Paul introduce themselves just before they go into their presentations and demos. Uh, a little bit of insight into my background. I've been involved with um, information security for probably around a long time. I spent slightly more than 20 years working for a number of military and government intelligence agencies and slightly less than 20 years working for a number of commercial security organizations. Okay, so before we step into our first presentation, I'd just like to ensure we're all starting from the same point of understanding with regards to SCM. So security configuration management, what is it? Well, it's one of those practices that straddles the boundary between IT operations and IT security. In general, you can think of it as 10% policy 20% process and 70% software. It combines or it should combine elements of vulnerability assessment with configuration assessment and automated remediation in order to reduce business risk by ensuring systems are properly configured or hardened to meet with your internal regulatory and legislative compliance standards. SCM combines network monitoring and endpoint protection methodologies to compare monitored systems against an approved configuration baseline or a goal build. Deviations from this baseline, known as test failures, uh, can usually be corrected with little or no human intervention. I would suggest that SCM is no longer a nice to have solution. It's a must have solution. And today, virtually every enterprise and government agency will use an SCM solution as part of their defense in depth strategy, um, as well as an audit verification tool for compliance to any number of security and regulatory standards. So with that in mind, I'd like to hand you over to Jeff Lawson, Director of Product Management for Tripwire, um, for our first presentation. Security Configuration Management Made Easy with Tripwire Enterprise. Thank you, Paul, and hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Lawson. I am the Director of Product Management with Tripwire, uh, basically for our SCM products, which include Tripwire Enterprise, Tripwire for Servers, and Configuration Compliance Manager, also known as TE, TFS, and CCM. Uh, for the next 20 minutes or so, I'll be walking you through things that I have learned in this industry, um, especially around our security landscape, uh, some of the other cool things about how good SCM practices, even the most basic ones, can help protect your organization from the bad guys. In tracking our agenda today, thank you to my esteemed colleague Paul for walking you through the first question, what is security configuration management? So I will be talking to you about threats, you know, the problems that every organization faces today, you know, where it's coming from, who it is, and what types they are, the analysts out there, and what they actually believe we should be doing from a basic standpoint, uh, standards, standards that are out there providing guidance and clarity and how you can utilize and why you should utilize these standards to help you clarify your own security processes the basics around how Tripwire Enterprise can help you cover those standards, and in conclusion, understanding that watching the endpoint, not just the network, is the key to any great security program. So where are the threats coming from in today's security landscape? First off, 
everyone should understand that these are professionals. They're recruited, they're paid, they're trained, and they're educated. This is not the work of script kiddies, teenagers, disgruntled employees. These are real criminal organizations from all over the world whose job it is to hack your organization and steal your data, hurt your reputation, prove a point, play political games, or even ransom your own intellectual property back to you. Remember, these guys share tools, they share information, they help each other. Generally, we classify the attacks the bad guys use into three types, commodity attacks, targeted attacks, and advanced persistent threats. The most prevalent, by far, commodity makes up around 80% of all reported attacks. Hackers take a very simple, easy to utilize and widely available tool and go after a very large range of systems across the internet. These systems usually come from multiple organizations and they are looking for easy access or known vulnerabilities. They don't target your individual organization, but instead are looking to create havoc and utilize tools such as DDoS, dynamic denial of service, and other methods in doing so. The next largest segment of attack types is targeted threat. It makes up about 19.99% of the total. This type of attack means your organization is singled out and the attacker has a specific interest in your business or your intellectual property. These types of attacks take time and planning, sometimes months to lay the groundwork and prepare. Attackers still use commodity techniques to probe the systems in your organization looking for the best path to exploit, but their methods are specifically tailored to your infrastructure, your processes, and your personnel. The remaining type of attack is an APT and consists of only about 0.01% of the total attacks out there. That's right, 0.01%. Advanced Persistent Threat is a set of stealthy and continuous computer hacking processes, often targeting specific entities or organizations for business or political reasons. The end game is usually information specifically items that could compromise or financially hurt an organization, trade secrets, classified government information, health care, personally identifiable information, and other such types. Remember, a stolen credit card has a very short life cycle. The real value is in identity and secrets, as that can have an impact for years in a variety of different ways. Could you imagine how much less risk your organization would have if you could eliminate 99.99% .99 of attacks? The only reason that commodity and targeted attacks are effective is because organizations struggle to follow basic security practices and properly institute measurable security policies. Even though 99.99% .99 of attacks are basic in nature, and require holes to be there in order to exploit, security breach levels continue to soar around the world. In the 2015 Government Information Security Breaches Survey, we saw security attacks rise again. There has been an increase in the number of both large and small organizations experiencing breaches. 90% of large organizations reported that they had suffered a breach, up from 81% in 2014. In fact, 82% of respondents believe their organization would experience a cyber attack in 2015. The majority of UK businesses surveyed, regardless of size, expect that breaches will continue to increase in the next year. The survey found 59% of all respondents expected to see more security incidents, and on average, the cost of those security incidents and breaches continues to skyrocket, up over 23% since 2013. Security awareness training is growing but there is still work to do. Even though over 78% of board members are concerned about cybersecurity, 14% of respondents have never briefed their board on security risks, and over 21% of organizations have not even tried in the last year to brief their board. Of course, this is not just a UK phenomenon. These trends exist globally and are reported even higher in some areas and regions. So, do you believe those numbers? 
in the work that I have done with multiple entities and organizations, conversations with information security officers, reviews of security breaches and reports, analysts, everyone that I've talked to, I think we all believe that these numbers are actually higher in practice. All companies have experienced a breach. The question is, are you aware of it? Did you know you got breached? All respondents realistically believe that there will be more incidents next year, not fewer. And the cost of a breach, as being reported by organizations, is radically less than most experts believe, as it may take years to truly measure the impact to brand, to business, and to intellectual properties. It's not just the cleanup. It's not just the fines. It is the lasting effect that is difficult to quantify. In light of the types of attacks out there, who and where they are coming from, what are analysts telling us to do? Gartner, a widely respected organization which publishes predictions and recommendations around cybersecurity, recently showed off their five key recommendations for 2016. Of those five, all very valuable, two of them correlate directly to security configuration management and basic security practices. Gartner, as well as many other experts and analysts out there, have realized that most organizations are failing to do the basics of SCM and that those practices are essential to an effective security program. You cannot follow a risk-based approach and innovate at the edges of security without doing the basics first. This is war, and you don't go into a fight without being properly protected and provisioned. You don't park your car in a bad neighborhood and not lock the doors. You have to do the basics first before you can even think about taking on the advanced persistent threats out there. Remember, 99.99% are exploits of known vulnerabilities with commodity tools. These can be blocked with basic security hygiene. So experts and analysts are telling us to do the basics. Well, what exactly are those? When you look at the pyramid around approaching security, basic security hygiene is the base for all of it. And it can consist of patch management. You know, being able to apply patches to applications and systems where the holes and the vulnerabilities exist. These are the things that are being exploited easily by commodity attacks. Secured configuration management. Even if you're not patching, if you had proper security configuration management in place and you had those systems locked down, it can still be effective. The kill chain of an exploit will absolutely have privilege escalations, access to network shares and services, creation and manipulation of data, dropping of payloads, exfiltration, all sorts of steps and be caught and blocked by good secured configuration management. Privileged access management, making sure that users only have access to what they should and detect when those privileges get escalated or changed. Change detection itself is a huge key in all of this. If you spend your money and hours configuring systems to be more secure, managing your patching, well, guess what? You need to know when a change occurs. You must know why a secured configuration changes as well as understand how this affected your risk posture. The faster you know, the faster you can remediate. Incident response, when something happens, you have to be able to get in there, identify the attack, how far it is spread, and then come up with a plan or a response. To do this, you need the deep information about who was making changes, why changes were occurring, when they occurred, and how many systems were affected by it. Threat intelligence, another huge piece to this. By utilizing threat intel, you can actually identify when bad actors deliver payload and begin exploiting systems picking up a new executable or binary, the hash value of it, getting it checked with a threat intel service can tell you immediately if it's malware and it'll help you eliminate the noise of typical change and allow you to concentrate on the higher risk things, especially to configurations and files. The most basic security practices are all about reducing your attack surface, making it harder to get into your systems and move around your network, 
and catching changes that should not be happening. When you can do this, you can then respond to indicators of breach. You can utilize your intelligence communities and tools to help you understand when something is bad and then quickly and effectively remediate or respond to them. Remember, even the most sophisticated hackers in the world still utilize commodity attacks and commodity methods before using zero days. It's just easier. So, everyone agrees that basic security practices are important, but does everyone know what they are supposed to do? There are so many different types of systems and applications out there. What files should I be monitoring? How should I be securing configurations such as password settings, local firewalls, user access and permissions? What types of changes are indications of compromise for my organization? Well, you're not alone if those are the questions you're asking, and there is help out there. Many organizations and standards that want to help you fight the good fight. Examples are NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, ISO, the International Standards Organization, and CIS, Center for Information Security. All of these provide prescriptive guidance on how to lock down your systems and what you need to be monitoring. Very helpful when you aren't quite sure. Analysts and myself highly recommend adopting a framework, even if you already feel like your security practices are mature, as these frameworks will help you identify areas for improvement, plus they continuously update their frameworks based on today's attack patterns. This way, you get to utilize their experts, and they are on your side to help move you forward. Plus, many of these are favored for industries that you are in. You know, they provide the best practices to protect you against the type of attacks that present the most risks to your type of organization. After seeing the attackers and how breaches continue to soar, and then knowing that you have help in the standards organizations and communities out there, how can Tripwire then simplify what sounds like a really complicated strategy? Well, number one, you have to pick a good SCM tool that has the necessary capabilities. That is where Tripwire Enterprise comes into play by providing these eight core functions to your organization that help simplify SCM as a whole. Number one, baselining. Tell me everything I need to know about the current state of a system. If I don't know what I have, then how do I ever know when things change? Number two, assessment. Compare that current state to a desired state and tell me where it is different. This is where using policies and standards and frameworks such as CIS or ISO can help tell you where you need to be. Number three, detection. When I finally hit my desired state, you have to be able to tell me when my desired state changes. This is where risk starts to creep in. This is where holes start to get opened up. And if you're not detecting those changes, you are opening yourself up for exploitation. Number four, inspection. Give me all the details and attributes around why a change occurred. So this is the who information, the what information, the when information, the configuration state of my password settings before, and what it is now. This is being able to dig in and inspect and identify how I need to move forward. If I don't know or I don't understand why, then how do I know if it's good or bad? Number five, remediation. When something doesn't match my desired state, I have to know how to fix it, and I have to know how to do it quickly. With Tripwire Enterprise and our policies embedded into our system, we can tell you exactly how to fix things. Number six, automation. I have thousands of systems in some cases. I can't be taking manual steps on everything I do. So with Tripwire Enterprise, you can automate these manual tasks and implement consistent and automatic actions. 
Number seven, integration. You have to be able to enhance the value of your system and others by easily sharing data. This is not a war we will win on our own. With Tripwire Enterprise, we believe we can enhance the value of your other systems, whether it is in your IT operations and change management, or it is in your other security programs, by sharing the data that we detect and that we know. And then finally, number eight, visibility. When incidents happen, how do we respond? We need to be able to utilize the details, the history, and investigate and identify what I need to do. It may be removing systems from the network, it may be cleaning systems, it may just be strengthening my configuration. It really depends on what happens and why things happen. So you have to have the deep details to move forward. With those eight core capabilities, Tripwire Enterprise gives you an amazing tool for tracking configurations, changes, and remediating drift. But even with this tool, the sheer volume of change and the number of systems that require unique secured configurations can make this a daunting task. Yes, we are here to help, and here's how we believe we differentiate ourselves in the SCM world. Number one. We make compliance to security standards easier. Take what can be a very difficult thing to do and make it easier with the broadest set of compliance and security policies that accelerate securing your infrastructure and knowing where the weak points are. We update these policies as standards change and allow you to customize the tests and assessment results to better meet your individual needs. A great example of this would be to take a CIS policy, clone it, then modify some of the test result checks to match more of your internal strategy. You get a giant head start on your security policy and framework and the flexibility to make it your own. Number two, we have your infrastructure covered. Everyone has a unique infrastructure. Legacy applications, older operating systems, hardware that is just plain difficult to remove. We believe that just because it's old doesn't mean it isn't valuable and you should be able to get the same amount of protection and monitoring as the rest of your systems. We have you covered. With an agent or agentlessly, we can monitor almost any asset that you have. Number three, we detect changes in real time. So Tripwire Enterprise is the best change detection engine out there. Heck, it is part of our DNA and what separates us from the competition. Imagine if you could catch drift in your secured configurations in real time, having a chance to remediate and respond to those changes, and then assess the overall impact to your security posture within seconds. Eliminate the old days of doing a scan every 90 days, spending weeks manually fixing the hundreds or thousands of configuration changes that get you back in alignment with your security policy. Don't forget, as systems drift away from their secured configurations, commodity and targeted attacks become much simpler and your risk will continue to increase until remediated. Why wait? Best practice would be to do continuous assessment in real time and then fix the drift as it happens, leaving systems in an always secure state. Number four, we help you categorize and fix what changes. Remediation can be very expensive and it isn't always known if a change results in an increase or a decrease in risk. Expert IT staff members are needed to bring systems back in line with standards or policies and provide context as to why changes were made. With Tripwire Enterprise, we can provide your IT staff with the information and instructions needed to guide them through manually or automatically remediating the changes to the system that resulted in a lower security posture. Plus, by utilizing change windows, patch reconciliation, reference nodes, you can eliminate noise and focus on the things that propose the biggest risk. And number five, we are a key part of your enterprise ecosystem. All enterprises are unique. Infor information security itself has many tools. 
we truly believe in playing a part rather large within the enterprise security ecosystem. We provide programmatic and out-of-the-box integrations with many different vendors and partners, and we believe that our data can enhance the value of any security program. This allows you to provide visibility back to the board. It allows you to provide visibility into your posture and your security and your risk, and it allows you to see visibility into the changes that are occurring and how they correlate with other things happening in your organization. In the end, security configuration management is about watching the target, not just the wire. It is very important that you utilize network intrusion detection systems and prevention systems, but the problem is it is very easy to get in and to get on a system when you are not watching it. Secured configuration management is not just about an operating system. It is also about the settings on your firewalls or your routers where if there are holes there and they are not matching standards or they are changing, it makes it much easier for someone to get into the network and start delivering that payload onto systems. So we truly believe that if you're just watching the network, you are not secure. You must watch the target. This concludes my section in today's Simplifying SCM webinar. I thank you for your time. I thank you for listening, and I'll be passing this back to Mr. Paul Eden to continue. Thank you very much, everyone. Hey, Jeff. Thanks very much for that. That was great. Uh, I found it extremely interesting, and it's definitely given me some great subjects for my key takeaways. Well, now I'd like to hand you over to Paul Norris, who's one of our senior systems engineers. He's all set to take you through a, a great demo showing how to use Tripwire for SCM. Great, thank you for the introduction. Hello, I'm Paul Norris, I'm Senior Systems Engineer for Tripwire, and I've been working for the company now for just over six months. My background is information security, working in the industry for over 15 years. Today, I'm gonna to cover a few slides and then take you into a demonstration of Tripwire Enterprise and how it can help your organization. The first thing I would discuss is to introduce you to Tripwire Enterprise and what its core offerings are. We'll then discuss the different types of endpoints that can be monitored by Tripwire and I'll show you a very high level architecture on how it all fits together. And before I start the demonstration, I want to talk to you about some of the challenges organizations face today with regards to policies and standards. So let us begin. Tripwire Enterprise is a security configuration management suite whose separate components work as a standalone offerings or in a comprehensive, tightly integrated solution. It connects IT security to the businesses and missions it serves, protects systems by continually hardening their configurations and detects the issues that impact IT system integrity and causes exploits. There are three main products of the Tripwire portfolio. Tripwire Enterprise for security configuration management, which we'll go into more detail shortly, Tripwire IP360 for vulnerability management, and Tripwire Log Center for log intelligence. Tripwire Enterprise's File Integrity Manager module detects the anomalies, unexpected changes, and deviations that indicate exploit attempts or threats across the industry's broadest range of platforms, applications, and devices. It assures integrity and maintains a known and trusted state for critical systems and the information they contain. Tripwire Enterprise's Policy Manager module helps customers meet the numerous security standards and regulations they face, from not only in-house security requirements, but also government regulations such as PCI, ISO, CIS, and many, many more. There are a number different of endpoints that Tripwire Enterprise can monitor. The first most common one is file systems, hence the term file integrity monitoring. Tripwire Enterprise can monitor in real time files under Windows, Linux, and other operating systems. Where it comes to databases, Tripwire Enterprise not only monitors changes within the database itself, but can monitor changes to the structure of the database, known as the database schema. 
Another common endpoint that customers tend to monitor are changes to directory services, such as Active Directory. For example, identify who added who to the administrators group and when, etc. With regards to virtual infrastructures, we not only sit on the VMs as a file system agent, but we can also monitor the configuration of the infrastructure, such as the reconfiguration of virtual machines. And finally, but by no means least, network devices. Through a command line interface, Tripwire Enterprise can connect to many different types of network devices, such as firewalls, routers, and switches, pulling back information such as firewall rules, access control lists, and configurations. So following on from the endpoints that we can cover, here is a very high level architecture diagram. Tripwire Enterprise sits as an application hosted on a server. Its configuration and captured metadata is stored in a backend database. Agents are then deployed to file systems and connectors from those file systems tie into databases and directory services. And as we mentioned in the previous slide, we connect to network devices via command line interface over SSH, Telnet, or other protocols. Many organizations start with a goal in mind. Here is 80% compliance with CIS benchmarks for secure configurations. These organizations usually start with manual effort to get a big push done for a compliance audit deadline with a checkbox mentality. They just want to be able to check the box. Then, as time goes on, they realize it's costly and potentially exposes them to a greater risk than they want as they let themselves drift out of policy compliance in between audits, building up a big security and compliance debt and requiring a great deal of resource time and organizational push to ready for the next audit deadline. As an example, PCI requires quarterly external scans. If improper services, ports or protocols become enabled between the scans, let's say someone loads log me into their desktop for example, then the compliance issue may be created that you might not catch until right at audit time when the quarterly scan is done. This will then require remediation and a rescan, costing further time and money. The problem with this approach is that it creates these big blocks of remediation due to drifts and other untracked changes in the environment. So what's needed is the ability to remain continuously compliant by handling each set of changes as they happen and not letting big security policy and compliance debt build up. This is what Tripwire Enterprise with its three essential components of policy, integrity management and remediation does best. Continuously lowers cost, increases efficiency, limits drift and continuously keeps your organization both compliant and secure. So that's about enough of these slides. Let's jump into a quick demonstration of Tripwire Enterprise. Let's begin the file integrity monitoring component of Tripwire Enterprise. I've created a dashboard called Integrity Monitoring. Within Tripwire Enterprise, you can create different dashboards that contain charts or report data, and you can restrict these dashboards to specific users if you want to. This particular dashboard is showing us a summary of changes within our monitored environment. The columns represent each day and the colors represent whether it's an authorized change or an unauthorized change. For example, an authorized change is where a user has reviewed a change on an endpoint within Tripwire Enterprise and have promoted that change to the new baseline. In this demonstration, we are particularly interested in unauthorized changes. Let's click on the chart and drill down and see a list of what has changed. The next screen shows us a summary page, showing more detail on how many changes occurred and when they occurred. For this example, I want to see all the unauthorized changes that have occurred over the past week. Now we are drilling down into more detail. This report has shown us a list of changes identified per each endpoint. Note that Tripwire Enterprise tells you when the change was made, what was changed, the type of the change, and where available, who made that change. Our first endpoint, a Linux system that appears to have a web server running, and it shows that a number of files have been added to the HTML images folder. Let's click on one and see what was changed. First of all, we can see it was added by the user layer. And as we scroll down, Tripwire Enterprise captures the content of the change too. In this case, it looks like ASCII art of a TIE fighter. 
The plus symbol to the left indicates these are new lines added to the file. Let's return to our report list and click on another one of those files. Here you go, this time it's an X-Wing. On the same host, we see some files that have been modified by the admin user. Let's take a look to see what that modification is. Tripwire Enterprise has detected a line has been added to the password file. Looks like Vader has been added. You will also notice that the SHA-1 hash has also been changed as well. Let's scroll down and look at another endpoint, this time a Windows Server. Here we can see Luke has added a file to the root of the C drive at 7.33pm. Then at 7.39pm a modification is made to the local firewall on that server. In this case the file has been given access out of this particular server. And finally in this particular example we also see the listening ports on that local machine has changed too. Here we see that port 1337 is now listening on that server. Looking at the timings, it's highly probable this is the file that Luke dropped on the local drive has been executed. Let's take a look at the changes in our actual directory server. We can see here that R2D2 has been added as a user and this was conducted by Vader. And if we click on the modified administrators group, we can clearly see that R2D2 has been added to the administrators group also done by user Vader. Should we be trusting Darth Vader? As we mentioned before, we can also monitor databases. In this example, we are looking at Microsoft SQL database. We can see there's two users created, one called Han and one called Chewbacca. We can also see our payroll table has been altered. Looks like Han Solo has a huge pay rise and looks like he's gonna have a lot of holidays to take as well. On other systems, we can see other files modified. In this instance, we see that Layer has modified a password file and by the looks of things, added Luke as a user. Elsewhere, we can see two files that have been deleted from the system, Jar Jar Binks. Finally, let's see a firewall modification. In this instance, we are monitoring PFSense rules. Here we can see two changes. One adding a firewall rule in, shown in green, and one where a line has been removed, shown in red. Let's now focus on the policy and compliance component of Tripwire Enterprise. Tripwire Enterprise's policy manager module helps customers meet the numerous security standards and regulations they face, from not only in-house security requirements, but also governance regulations such as PCI, ISO, CIS, and many, many more. In this demonstration today, I will focus on PCI DSS policies. However, Tripwire Enterprise customers have access to a customer portal which contains over 650 different policies and configurations that the customer can download for free and import into Tripwire Enterprise. With each policy, there are a set of requirements and associated rules, which are the tests that Tripwire will run on the endpoint to see if the target in question is compliant. So let's jump back to Tripwire Enterprise and take you to the Policy Manager screen. Here we can import a number of different policies from the Customer Center. As we drill down on PCI version 3.1, you can see there are different tests for each operating system. And as we expand the operating system, you will then see something that is more familiar, the specific requirements. Let's open up a few to see the different requirements, file configurations, account lockouts, etc. These are several tests for a Windows 2008 domain member server. Let's return to one of our dashboards that shows the state of our compliance for PCI DSS. In this demonstration, we're focused on the results surrounding Windows systems. Let's click and drill down to the summary. The summary page will show the current status of the audit. Here we can see over 520 tests have failed. This particular report has categorized the results by each requirement. As we scroll down, we are able to click on each number to get more detailed information about the audit. Let's pick on the Dagobah system. A report is generated that contains detailed results. It contains information about the requirement, and most importantly, it lists step-by-step -step instructions on how to remediate the failed audit point. Additional information is also provided, such as external resources. 
and at the end of each test will contain the raw information the test found. In this case it failed and details of what the guest account name is along with the date and timestamp, ideal for the auditor. Let us take a look at another failed audit. This time we look at requirement 6 and we can see the Dagobah system has failed its test. We will drill down to the detailed test results. This test is looking for a valid service pack installed in the system. In this instance there isn't one, so detailed steps are provided on how to remediate this action. So in this short demonstration we covered file integrity monitoring and the policy management components in Tripwire Enterprise, two key components of security configuration management. Tripwire has a technology alliance program that supports a rich ecosystem of security technology partners to provide customers with complete solutions for advanced cyber threat protection, including integration to ticketing systems such as ServiceNow and Remedy, and threat intelligence providers such as Palo Alto and Cisco ThreatGrid to help identify the changes on the endpoint R threat. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I will now pass you back to Thank you very much for that, Paul. Well, we've had uh, an excellent presentation followed by an outstanding demonstration. So it just leaves me to go through what I believe are some of the key takeaways from today's webinar. So what key takeaways did I get? Well, I've, I've got four, uh, and I'm sure you've got a lot more, or I certainly hope you have. So my first one was Today's threats don't come from the script kiddies. That doesn't mean that they don't exist, that they're not still out there, because they are. It just means that they're not the big threat that they used to be. Today's threat comes from the well-organized, well-educated cyber criminals. They share tools, they share information, and when they're successful, they can share the profits. My second point would be do the basics. As we saw earlier in um, Jeff's presentation, advanced persistent threats were only responsible for 0.01% of the attacks throughout 2015. 99.99% .99 of the attacks were through known vulnerabilities, and the attacks were made with commodity tools. All of these can be blocked with basic security hygiene. My third point would be adopt a framework. The great thing about frameworks is they change with the threat landscape, so they stay reasonably up to date. They provide best practice um, advice across industries, and they allow you to use their experts to support your security efforts. The final one is Choose the right tool for the job. Now, I could say you wouldn't hammer a nail in with a spanner, but I'm pretty sure there are some people, including me at times, that would hammer a nail in with a spanner. But you understand the meaning. You need to select a tool that gives you the right functionality. You need to be able to do baselines so that you know the current state of your devices. You need to be able to do assessments so that you can compare those known states with your desired state. You need to have detection uh, capability so it can detect when changes take place and what those changes are from your current or desired state. Inspection, it needs to be able to tell you the who, what, when and why. It needs to provide remediation advice on how to fix things and fix them quickly. It needs to provide automation. You know, some of you, some of you, um, some of you guys have thousands and thousands of endpoints out there. You cannot be managing that manually. It has to be automated. Integration. You need to be able to integrate the information, whether it's from this tool, your SCM tool, into other tools or vice versa. But you do need to be able to integrate those tools so that you can share that data. And then visibility. So when incidents happen, you need to be able to utilize the details and the history to investigate, identify, and respond. Okay, well, that's it for today's uh, webinar. 
I'd just like to thank the presenters, Jeff Lawson and Paul Norris, an excellent job. Um, and I would like to thank everyone that attended uh, for giving up your time. Uh, I know it's very precious. And for anyone who is interested in some other free resources around SEM, please feel free to go to www.tripwire.com forward slash SEM and you can download um, a copy of the SEM for Dummies uh, and white papers and you'll find a whole host of other information available on, the, on our website. So thank you again and I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and demonstration. Goodbye.